right guys, it is another just brutal, nasty, brain melting, miserable, uh, hot summer day here in, here in May, where are we, we're at Friday, May 25th, 2018 here in the former paradise of uh, Garfield, Texas. So, being Friday, I'm in the middle of doing what I do every Friday here on Humpty Dumpty Drive, and that's bringing you my two part ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply open my email box to see uh, how we're heading directly into a, a uh, what is it? A brick wall. Yes, little dog. Got your itchy eye. At 67,000 miles an hour. Uh, this week. I just finished my Manga Bay Roundup rant and we're going to now go over to Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth and Washington Post for more evidence of how we're heading directly into a brick wall and why we are so fucked. And let me get everything together. My Jesus. Alright, start over here in Endangered Earth from the Center for Biological Diversity. Take it away. Alright. Their leadoff story, the broken record, the broken record, no shit, Sherlock Rant, Trump's latest assault on Alaska's wolves and bears. Trump's wildlife thrill killers are at it again. This week they launched a new effort uh, to end rules in Alaska that ban trophy hunters from gunning down wolf pups in their dens and baiting bears so they can be shot. The new rules will turn places like Denali National Park and preserve into a killing field. It is an awful expansion of the kind of trophy hunts Trump implemented in Alaska a few days after he took office. Hmm, quote, quoting the center's Colette Adkins, quote, cruel and harmful hunting methods are killing bear cubs and their mothers near dens, ha oh, I'm sorry, cruel and harmful hunting methods like killing bear cubs and their mothers near their dens have no place in our national reserves. And right next to that one, from, a la from the shithole state of uh, Alaska to the shithole state of Wyoming, Wyoming approves cruel Yellowstone grizzly hunt. And I think we've already mentioned this several times, but uh, one more time, the state of Wyoming has just approved a hunt that could kill 22 of Yellowstone's famed grizzly bears when they wander outside of national park boundaries. This is the uh, center's Noah Greenwald. Yellowstone's bears are national treasures and millions of people come to see them every year. It is senseless that Wyoming thinks they are more valuable dead than alive. Okay, I guess this is anywhere in the country or on the planet blinded by the light pollution. So uh, they have just mapped out some of the brightest U.S. oil and gas operations showing they outnumber even big cities lights. Light pollution can be deadly for birds. It obscures features normally visible to them in dark skies and birds attraction to artificial ice often throws them off their migration paths. 
uh, some fruitlessly circle natural gas flares, the effort causing them to lose almost half their body weight in one night. Artificial light can also degrade habitat quality and disrupt predator-prey relationships. And take a wild guess uh, where these, uh, this, this oil and gas development pollution light uh, lights are the strongest would be the shithole states of Texas, North Dakota, and California. I think we've already uh, beat the uh, sunscreens killing the coral story into the ground. All right, do we have some <clears throat> we have some good news according to the center disastrous farm <coughs> bill defeated. We breathed a sigh of relief uh, late last week with the defeat of the 2018 farm bill. The bill had included unprecedented anti-environment provisions including one exempting pesticides from Endangered Species Act review and allowing them to kill and peril plants and animals. It would have been the broadest attack on the Endangered Species Act in history. This is the center's Lori Ann Bird quote, the failure of this disastrous Republican bill is a great victory for endangered wildlife, public forest lands, and clean water. We are grateful to win this battle, but we will not stop to protect the health of our planet and species. All right, the uh, center teaming up with Planned Parenthood. There you go. Uh, together, we are working to unite supporters for common goals, including fighting Trump's plan to slash federal funding for reproductive health care and maintaining the contraceptive mandate of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, okay, more stories on uh, the, uh, the sage grouse. I think we understand the uh, sage grouse is fucked. Let's see. What's going on the latest fracking news? <clears throat> Trump opens door to dangerous fracking in northern Arizona. A new Trump administration plan proposes to auction off 4,200 acres of our public lands for oil and gas development in northern Arizona. The lands which straddle the Little Colorado River are within, the th are within three miles of Petrified Forest National Park and near habitat for a federally threatened fish, blah, blah, blah. Uh, drilling and fracking there would also threaten to deplete and pollute groundwater in the Little Colorado River Basin. Okay. Uh, we're going to move ahead from the Center for Biological Diversity and flip over to those eco Nazis at the Washington Post Energy and Environment Roundup this week. Uh, starting with uh, you know who. In an internal memo, the White House considered whether to simply ignore federal climate research. White House officials last year weighed whether to simply ignore the climate findings 
emerging from federal agencies under President Trump or instead develop a coherent fact-based message about climate change according to a memo obtained by the Post. Take a wild guess which uh, choice the Trump administration made. Okay, I already mentioned this uh, on Wednesday. Uh, bears repeating rice, the staple food of billions of people, could become less nutritious because of climate change. Rice contains lower levels of key vitamins when grown amid higher concentrations of carbon dioxide according to a new study. And that, right there guys, is the entire Washington Post Energy and Environment Roundup for one week. Is that right? You just heard the entire Washington Post. So anyway, uh, Chris Mooney and the guys had one week to survey this entire planet, this entire planet for news that they thought might be interesting to bring to their readers. And in one week, the Washington Post published two environment stories in one solid week. And I don't know what that really is all about. I, I'm not blaming uh, Chris Mooney for it. Uh, I noticed that you will not find Scott Pruitt's name mentioned in, uh, in you know, for the past uh, six or seven weeks, the Washington Post has been, not, the environment news roundup has been nothing but a, a, a no holds barred uh, hatchet job on EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt, whose name is not mentioned in the two story uh, energy and environment roundup. I would really like to know what is going on there. Uh, you know, I've been uh, congratulating the Washington Post the past couple of years for becoming the, one of the best mainstream media environmental uh, news uh, desks uh, out there. And I think we see the beginning of the end. Maybe Chris is just on vacation this week and they will be back next week uh, reporting the collapse of a planet. But anyway, so that was sure easy. I'm going to wrap up this week's uh, two-part ecological roundup rant and just decide whether I have time uh, to read the latest essay uh, from Richard Heinberg. Uh, that's an Alert Tribes member sent me today for my for my Collapse Chronicles uh, essay of the day. So I may or may not uh, be reading an excellent new essay from Richard Heinberg over on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, I'll figure it out. For Humpty Dumpty Tribe, smoke him if you got him, guys. We are so fucked whether or not the Washington Post is letting us in on that. Bye, guys.